Hi everyone and welcome to Miss Estric Biology. So your first A-level biology test might not have gone as you planned and that is totally fine and in fact it's completely normal to find that your first test doesn't actually go as well as you expected. But what's important now is how you respond to that test and that's what I'm going to be going through in today's video. How you can improve from a test result that hasn't gone as you hoped to make sure you then make continual progress so that the next test you do you see that improved grade. And can we just take a moment to notice how dark and gloomy it is right now? I've got my ring light on full power and still it looks ridiculously dark. Welcome to September and October everyone. So step number one of what is key to making sure you improve after a test that hasn't gone to plan is to analyze your answers. Now the way that I always get my students to do this and that I highly recommend is to follow something called marks analysis. So let's go through exactly what that acronym means. So yes, MARKS is an acronym where M stands for maths, A is application, R is reading the question, C is clarity of answer or communication issues, K is knowledge and S is statements per question. So MARKS analysis, the idea behind this is you need to review all of your answers to the test with the questions and the mark scheme. And for every question you lost a mark or more, you would then need to tally up in a table to say which of those from the marks analysis acronym is the reason you lost the mark and sometimes it might be a four or five mark question and it might be some of the marks were statements per question some were applications so it might be a mixture of them and then at the end you'd review to see which of those skills did you lose the most marks on. And just a big hello from BB, who's wishing you good luck for all your tests and your A-levels. But first of all, let's actually just go through what we mean by each of those parts in the acronym. Maths is fairly straightforward. Maths is any question where it was a maths question that you got the answer wrong or you missed the mark. Application question, these are the types of questions where you have to apply your knowledge to an unfamiliar example. Reading the question might be that you misread the command word, so maybe you just described instead of explained or maybe miss said it said use all the information and you didn't use any information from the text or a graph or data table in your answer communication issue or clarity of answer that is a big one for people at a level biology because the mark schemes are so specific so if you don't use the exact key phrase key term you might have had a rough idea that was correct but you wouldn't get the marks unless you phrased and explained it spot on with your clarity knowledge gaps is either you just left a question blank you didn't know it or what you wrote was incorrect and then finally statements per question is everything you wrote got a mark but you didn't write enough so maybe it was a four mark question you wrote three things that were on the mark scheme you got three marks and you just missed the final bullet point from the mark scheme now if you want more help on this marks analysis i actually have a whole youtube video that i did based on marks analysis which i'll link up here so you can go and watch that pause this video analyze your test results and then come back here so step two once you've done your marks analysis hopefully you've now got an idea of which skill costs you the most marks and you could actually do a second analysis where you look at all the theory topics that came up and see which questions did you lose the most marks on to get an idea of what skill cost you the most marks and maybe which bit of the theory lost you the most marks as well to see if was there a particular topic you didn't remember or understand in enough detail and once you've got those two key ideas you now know what you need to focus on to improve and that's where setting a target to improve comes into it and that's where we come to smart targets our second acronym of the video now you have probably heard of smart targets before but if you haven't a smart target yes as i said it's another acronym here's what it stands for the s is specific so you have to set yourself a specific activity that you will do such as i will revise biological molecules more because that's really vague you've not said exactly what you're going to do it needs to be something that you can actually achieve so there's no point saying that you're going to answer every application question in there for a-level biology because it won't be possible you've not learned all the information yet and you probably can't get your hands on all of them as well it needs to be relevant so making sure that whatever the activity is that you're picking it is actually linked to what you need to do to improve so if you've said that clarity of answer is your issue it's not going to be helpful to do a load of maths questions it needs to be relevant maybe do things like flashcards where you're testing your knowledge and memory of the key marking points. 
And then the T starts for time bound. You have to set yourself a time limit. And this is where I think most students fall down. Quite often they'll say, I'll do it before the next test. But the next test might be six to eight weeks away, by which point, let's face it, you're probably gonna have forgotten because you're gonna have a whole other load of homework piling up and it won't be a priority anymore. So what I always think is most effective is to set yourself a one or two week time limit for this activity. So let's say it's application questions that you need to improve on. What I'd recommend is you would say for whichever topic it is, let's say biological molecules, you will answer three application questions within the next week. Or you might say four application questions within the next two weeks, because that is something that you can realistically achieve. It'd be relevant if application skills were the ones you lost the most marks on and you've set a time limit, which is short enough that you should get it done. Now, what you could then do when that one week is up or the two weeks are up is set yourself another smart target. And I think the key for smart targets to be achievable is short time frames and making sure you're picking something that realistically you can achieve in that short time frame. Because then you'll start to see the progression doing these tiny targets slowly improving. By the time you get to the next test, you should see hopefully a big improvement. Now, if you're not sure the sort of realistic, relevant activity you could set yourself to do, then just drop a comment below and I'll give you an idea. So just let me know what is the skill, what is the topic, and I can suggest a target for you personally. Now the final thing I recommend is reflect on your revision. So consider honestly do you think you did enough revision? Did you start early enough? And did you do the correct type and quality of revision? So let's think did you do enough and start early enough? For most students you're probably given one to two weeks notice before you have a class test and it's for either a whole topic or a small section of a topic. So if you're given two weeks notice your teachers are expecting you to revise for that full two weeks, not to revise for three, two days beforehand, or maybe just the night before. So if you've got two weeks notice, that should be an indication that it is going to take you two weeks to learn or remember all of this content and have time to practice. So think, did you actually start revising from when you were told you had the test? And if the answer is no, then you haven't given yourself enough time to fully prepare. The next thing is, did you do the correct types of revision? Now, you need to make sure that you're not just reading your notes, reading the textbook, watching YouTube videos, because that's all very passive where you'll be hearing or reading the information again, which will help you understand it, but it's not going to help you remember it and it's not going to improve your exam technique and your skills. So you might do that as a start point, but that should only be about 20% of your revision. You should then spend 40% of the time testing can you remember it. And that's where doing things like using flashcards or active recall, things like my workbook can really help. And in fact, I've got a both of those resources, my flashcards, which cover all the key marking points, and my actual recall, which will test your knowledge of all of the theory available as well, which I'll link below. The final 40% of the time should be spent doing exam questions, because that is the best way to improve your exam technique and to get really familiar with the types of questions and the level of detail that the examiners are after in the mark schemes. So it's really important that you take a moment to reflect on your first test, whether that was your first test in year 12, or maybe this is your your first test in year 13. And along with that, don't beat yourself up and give yourself a hard time if you didn't do very well, because as I said, that is completely normal. It is a big step up and it's quite a big shift in how you have to change the way that you revise and prepare for tests at A-level. So the key is follow all of these strategies now and you will make improvements. And if you do want any more help with this, then I recommend you check out my video here, resources that you can use to help you to revise to get an A-star. But that's it for this week. I hope you found it helpful and I'll see you next week. And hopefully you haven't been too distracted by BB who has been purring the whole way through this video. So clearly she's a big fan of Mark's analysis and smart targets. But for now, bye everyone.